This is the final chapter of this project. It's been a long time in coming. But three quarters of the way through I lost a bit of interest, which I had to revive again a little while ago. It shows the final assembly, testing and actually getting to turn something. I had a lot of fun getting all the disciplines joined together. Starting with CAD, I used TurboCAD, where the design is detailed in 2D, saving the drawing in the DXF format. Then onto the CAM software, deciding on what tools to use and the sequence and speed of machining. This is where the G-code is produced as a sequence of commands and coordinates in a text file. Mach 3 control software is widely used and free to try. Interprets the code and outputs the control signals to the hardware. Simple pulses to drive the stepper motors with surprisingly high accuracy. So, starting in the CAD, adding lines and curves about a center line. I chose a popular example, chess pawn. The zero reference point for X and Z are key coordinates. Drawing is saved in a DXF format which is compatible across the industry. There are many free software packages available. I evaluated three popular ones, the first of which is EasyLathe. The drawing of the pawn is uploaded into the software where one can choose tool geometry, speeds and feeds etc. And then on to choosing each segment in sequence for the machining cycle rather tedious, then on to scrolling through the G-code to simulate the actual machining cycle. G-code is a simple text file of G commands. Simplest G1 for example, go to position X at speed F and then return home. The next CAM software is called Lazy Turn. Very similar to the previous one, but rather a difficult way of defining the key coordinates for sense line, material, job diameters, and z axis offsets. Again, loading a sample file and defining material offsets, tool geometry, depth of cut, surface speeds, and so on. After which, the G code is produced and simulated in order to debug before breaking something in the real world. Notice how the tool path is modified to compensate for the tool geometry chosen. I didn't use this software. The software I chose to use is called Garble Groove, an acronym for absolutely nothing at all. The software was designed by a group of enthusiasts and is available to download for free. These guys have spent an awful amount of time in writing this amazing code. There are modules for CNC lathes, milling machines, multi-axis machines, rotary engravers and more. There are a number of standard machine designs available to load. This is a simple lathe used for this example. By loading the original outline drawing in 3D mode, the program revolves the sketch and produces a 3D solid model of our original sketch. Don't really need the machine so it can be switched off. We now go to 2D mode and start defining some jobs by filling a range of parameters in three tables. The first job is the roughing profile, choosing 300 per minute and 2 millimeters depth of cut amongst others. The second job is the finishing profile, two passes of a half a millimeter each. The tool design has already been defined. Changing back to 3D mode to simulate the chosen parameters and do a real time test run. This is really cool as one can rerun the test with new parameters 
to evaluate the cycle times and the like. I've often found some problems that can be rectified simply by readjusting the tool angle and so on. So having simulated everything multiple times, it was time to attempt some real wood. I chose some purple heart as I had some in stock and it was reasonably hard. Automatic production is not forgiving. If you get something wrong, there are consequences. I'd researched the cutting tool geometry and modeled line on commercial designs used on automatic lathes. A broad tool approaching too fast just digs in. I adjust the design slightly solve this problem. The second attempt was more successful, but I was a bit off with the starting position. This type of wood turning does not compete with the amazing works of art produced by my wood turner friends, but has a place in a factory producing long production runs of the same part over and over again. I was pleased with the ultimate result and had proved the concept and learned a great deal along the way. Now that this project is complete, I will have to find something else to do. There is an old surface grinder that requires a facelift and has taken my fancy of late.